everyone. I'm uh, Jeremy from Copengo, and today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a few challenges uh, we met uh, when scaling somewhat with uh, Triton. So uh, first, a word about the context of these uh, challenges. So we do a Triton-based application to manage insurance contracts. And so for, <coughs> for this, one of the job of the application is for each insurance contracts we have to uh, post invoices and uh, process payments for those contracts. Uh, we have somewhat large databases. <coughs> the biggest is uh, 500,000 contracts, about, about this number. And the job I mentioned must be done in, in a few hours. Uh, so, uh, how do we do this? Is by batch treatments. So during the night, we use a task queue, distributed task queue, uh, salary here, and we launch several uh, process processes, uh, concurrent processes to do the job. Um, so we simply uh, <coughs> query the database for the objects we are interested in. We store the IDs in uh, Redis, uh, in uh, small uh, uh, groups, like maybe uh, 1,000 IDs, for example, or uh, small groups. And those represent tasks that uh, the, the Python processes that are, that are launch, launched concurrently will process uh, together. Okay, so uh, first problem we met is with invoice numbers. So, uh, how if we have a thousand, a few thousand invoices, we simply call the post method with them, and the job will be done uh, quickly enough for us. But as you can see, uh, I don't know. Can you see what's written in the code? Yes. Yeah. So uh, there is this uh, set number method. So how do we do? Uh, when I say how to how to post, uh -uh, it means how to post it quickly, quickly enough. So if we have like ten or twenty thousand invoices, uh, we thought we sh should uh, process those invoices in. Um, with concurrent workers, concurrent processes. But uh, we can't simply do that because the invoice number sequence is a strict sequence. What it means is that the table or the row, the, the table which is called IR sequence strict, is locked uh, when we try to get a new, a new ID from from it, a new number, a new number, a new invoice number. So if we would have several uh, concurrent processes calling uh, concurrently the set number method, we will get database operational errors. That's logical, uh, not a problem in itself, but the problem is that we have to post those invoices quickly. So how, uh, how do we do? We can't process them, uh, post them concurrently. So how do we do? Uh, we chose to set, to separate the job into, uh, a first job will be to set the numbers on the invoices. And once that's done for every invoices, we post them. We do the rest of the posting process, uh, creating moves, etc. So, <laughs> Uh, so with only one one process, one uh, Triton D process, we call the set number uh, on all the invoices. With only one process, one process, no no concurrent access problem. Uh, so using this method, we we can uh, post many thousand uh, invoices uh, quickly enough. Um, I, Am I being clear? Uh, is uh, everyone following? Yeah. 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 
So now, how do we post a few hundred thousand invoices? Uh, so using the method I uh, mentioned, <coughs> um, the numbering, numbering job itself uh, takes too long already. Uh, if we have, yeah, say, 500,000 invoices using the machines we had, uh, standard machines, uh, the, the, the numbering, the simply calling set number on uh, all those invoices uh, sequentially will take several hours. So it was not uh, quick enough. Uh, so what could we have done? Uh, uh, as in, as anyone here, any idea? Because we, we are very open to suggestion or criticism, yeah. I think probably the issue is that when you get a, num a new number from the sequence yes. in Triton, he updates the table sequence yeah. to increase. Yeah. And indeed, w probably what you will need is to convert the sequence object to be a kind of uh, generator that will generate all your numbers mm. you need, increase it by one and, and so on. Yeah. So you can write all your invoices at <coughs> once with a new uh, number for each invoice and at the end oh. store oh. the last number yeah. in the sequence. Yeah. So you will reduce a lot of yeah. updates. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that would have worked. Yeah, maybe we will do that. So uh, we didn't do that. We, do di we did differently. Uh, this is what we, we did. <laughs> Uh, we bypass the set number method and we write, uh, we've written our own version of that, uh, like this. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's not really uh, legible. Uh, yeah, I want to read the code. Uh, so, wh what, what, does, what it does is, uh, it's uh, almost pure uh, Python SQL. Uh, we take Above, you see uh, the signature of the method. We receive IDs of uh, invoices that are already sorted uh, for the job. Uh, many uh, it, those, those are invoices for the same company, and uh, they have the same invoice date. <coughs> uh, what we do is, um, if I summarize, we kind of count how many invoices we have. Uh, no, that's not really. The, we uh, for each invoice uh, we use a um, it's a window function just to uh, we have those invoices and we take uh, the number the number next internal uh, from the sequence table and we increase it uh, using SQL uh, for each invoices. And so we set the number with only one uh, uh, query. And once this is done, we finally update the number next internal on the sequence. Uh, so that's SQL. We did it with SQL with one query <laughs> instead of calling uh, the set number method. Uh, so we, this works uh, well. The job, which took several hours, now takes less than a minute. So that was good. What is bad is that this is a lot of code, only for getting uh, sequential numbers. And that's it. Uh, an another problem we had with uh, invoice numbers is that if um, some of the invoices in the, our system are posted uh, directly by users, so uh, end users of the system, which are uh, insurance contract managers, they do stuff with the contracts, and those actions must uh, uh, create and post invoices and so set the number on those invoices and so in production we often had often have uh, often have now uh, database operational errors because of the concurrent access on the ER sequence trick table 
There is a retry in the dispatch of Triton. If uh, we get a database operational error, it is cached, and then uh, Triton will retry to execute uh, the transaction. But uh, despite this, we still have, because we, we have this error, like more than the number of retries. So uh, I, I don't think we are uh, the only one having this problem. I think I've heard someone say that they also had this problem. I don't, I don't remember who. We'll see, maybe. Maybe we are the only one. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what I was saying. So this is what happens now. Uh, the problem we have, so action on the contract, uh, calling something that we uh, post invoices, so we call get number. From the moment get number is called, uh, the table is locked. So if another user comes and tries to get a number, here we get the, the database operational error. So the part in red here is uh, what cannot be done uh, in parallel, concurrently, you can uh, have several users uh, doing the same job, this job, concurrently. And then uh, once we have the number, uh, it's returned, there is more data processing, and then the transaction is committed. So from here, uh, another user can call set number, uh, can post invoices. So uh, how did we try to improve this? Um, we did this. So uh, I will ask Adrian to correct me if I'm wrong, because he's the one who has implemented this. So uh, action on the objects, we re-invoice. We call get number that we have changed so that it returns a temporary number. Uh, it will store calls. Um, then the rest of the data processing is done. And during the two-phase commit, uh, we execute uh, the store, the calls that were stored previously, uh, which uh, creates sub-transaction, uh, which are calls to the, the usual set number method. And then this returns. Then we, we commit all the sub-transactions uh, right before the main transaction is committed. So the, the, goal, the goal is to postpone as much as possible uh, the code that will, uh, that will lock the table. So uh, before we had a big part in red, the time during which the table is locked. And we try to reduce this as much as possible. And so this is a, a bit experimental. Uh, we had to patch uh, the Triton D server. Uh, but the it seems to work OK. Uh, have I forgotten anything? No. Um, just the, the maybe, maybe you can. Yeah. No, uh, it's pretty cl pretty clear. Uh, I think um, just the, sto the the core of store because the um, the method is decor is uh, is decorated with a, a Python decorator, um, and uh, the 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 core is stored into the um, data manager that is the same that uh, SMTP uh, data manager, for instance. And uh, all these calls are, um, are executed during the, 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 the commit of this two-phase commit, uh, the specific two-phase commit. Uh, it's, it will just uh, execute the, the method and, uh, in a sub-transaction, which won't be committed. Because uh, or, uh, what we need is, uh, if one sub-transaction fails, uh, both must fail and the main transaction as well. So um, this is why it's not committed during the TPC commit. It's, uh, and this is why we patched the, the Triton server is because we add a, a loop on subtransaction to be committed just before the main transaction commit. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, 
So yes, it worked pretty well. Um, uh, for now, we're testing. We're testing it. Um, uh, as far as we as we test it, um, when we had uh, two two managers doing the same time, uh, the same thing at the same at the same time, uh, before the patch, it could take uh, two minutes, uh, one minute per action, and because it is. Uh, um, uh, sequence, sequentially, uh, one 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 action is is did after the the, the <coughs> first one. Okay. So uh, wi with our patch, uh, they are they are done uh, at the same time. So it it took one minute for the for both of for both of us, both yeah. of them. Yeah. So Instead of a user having to wait for another user to yeah. finish, uh, they now can do the job. Uh, uh, at, at the, the same, same time. time. Okay. So we'll keep you. Uh, we'll try to keep the community updated if uh, anyone is interested in uh, in using or seeing the code. Or mm -hmm. uh, I think it, it's already uh, in our fork of uh, Triton D on GitHub. Mm -hmm. So wow. we'll see. We'll check. Okay. Uh, so this this uh, this uh, looks like it resolves uh, uh, one of our problems. Uh, any ideas, questions about uh, the invoice number problem? Okay. So uh, second problem. Uh, uh, to be very honest, I'm not sure it is a problem with Triton per se. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, it's just us or uh, the tools we use. I will see that. So uh, yeah, sometimes uh, we meet situation when the kernel uh, of uh, our uh, operating system will uh, will talk about sacrificing a child. So uh, we do. So we do uh, SEPA payments processing. Uh, we had no problem with it. Uh, we call the payment uh, dot process uh, method. We had no problem until we reached about 50,000 payments uh, processed together. Uh, at that time, uh, we had two problems. Um, mainly, uh, the processing would take too long for us. And sometimes, we would run out of memory. So uh, processing around 50,000 SEPA payments at once will take too long. The solution. Uh, the solution we found is to simply increase the weak record cache size. Uh, so, good to know. Um, you set in the context uh, of the transaction the, the, the size of the of the cache for uh, records, and uh, uh, for this kind of problem, it, it it solved the problem. It was very much uh, much much faster. Uh, we are were, we were happy to, to, to find uh, a solution uh, quickly, and uh, the, the framework was, uh, um, um, how do you say? Uh, ready. Huh? Ready. ready, yeah. That's nice. But uh, if we pushed the record cache size too far, or we launched uh, too much uh, um, uh, Triton D processes together with the big record cache size, we got this, so simply we run out of memory. Um, <coughs> the server we use for for that kind of processing, I think it's 16 gigabytes uh, r random access memory. It's not huge, but it's already nice to have 16 gigabytes, if even. So, um, and with uh, maybe two gigabytes of, of, of swap memory, we would, we would uh, run out of memory. Uh, by processing, I think it was like uh, processing together five groups of 25,000 payments. Processing them together would, would, would kill uh, the process would be killed because because of uh, out of memory uh, error. Yeah, Celery is the task the task queue uh, distributed task queue we use, and beyond it are several uh, Triton D processes. So the question we have now is uh, how do we find the best record cache size for a given job? Uh, what we use now is, for example, we have a job of 25,000 payments. 
we set the record cache size to 50,000, so twice that. Um, we are not sure that the right number, it's really empirical. You try and it fails. Or I don't know, I don't really know how to maybe Ali knows this better than I, but it's not, not easy to, to find the right, the right size. And we haven't plainly uh, fully analyzed uh, mirror ratio and separate processing. Is it really a, a Triton problem? Is it uh, a salary problem? Um, we don't know. I don't know. So, uh, and for incoming projects for our application, so using Triton, we are going to have to process SEPA uh, uh, payments in the tens of millions uh, uh, quickly. So, that'd be fun. We'll, we'll see how, how we can do this. Um, so, to end, uh, uh, when we meet uh, performance issues, what do we use? We use profiler, uh, profile hooks provides a decorator for your functions to, to, pro to, to profile, profile it. And run snake run is a profile viewer. Uh, so we also log, log long database requests uh, using simply the, the logs of uh, Postgres. And maybe some tool we may have to use. Uh, I would like to know how to use uh, our memory profi profilers. I don't know if anyone here has any experience with it. Maybe we can talk about it later. Uh, so that's done. If uh, anyone uh, does, anyone have questions? For for the SEPA generation, yeah. uh, did you investigate if it was not Genshi the issue? Because we uh, maybe. we generate a very large XML file, yeah, yeah. and we use the XML uh, template engine from Genshi, which I, I probably think create a lot of objects, yeah. and maybe you could change it into a, a text-based generator. Could try that. Yeah. And so you you don't have the XML validation, but yeah. normally it should be valid. okay. Okay. Uh, it's this long. It's, it's just invoice. Sorry. It's a lot of invoice, but it's one file, one invoice at a time. So. What, what is the size of the generated XML? Yes. Uh, uh, we have uh, twenty-five thousand payments. It's, it it gives you a I think a uh, between five hundred uh, megabytes and one gigabyte file. Yeah, it's a big file. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that. I don't remember exactly, but I uh, will see. And uh, I was thinking it was twenty-five thousand bucks, but small Yeah. Okay. Thank you.